<clears throat> okay, so today I'm going to very briefly, well, I'm going to make it as brief as possible, go over all of the many cybersecurity layers that we recommend. And the key point is to explain exactly why we recommend each of these items. So we don't want to just say, hey, buy these things. We want to say this is what it is and why it's needed to better frame these recommendations. So we're going to, this presentation is going to go over the four generations of cybersecurity and how they've evolved over the last 10 years. Um, so we're going to start with generation one, which was about a decade ago. Very simple here. We had a firewall that was basically just routing traffic to the switch, which routed to the endpoints, servers, etc. We implemented an antivirus. Everyone's familiar with firewall and antivirus for the most part and a Windows firewall. And the backup was a tape backup, which I've heard was not a very good time in IT. <laughs> These were not very reliable and kind of scary. So that's Gen 1. Couldn't be easier. Very simple time a decade ago. Now we're moving to Gen 2. A few things have changed here. One is the firewall is now getting daily updates. So bad guys are on the rise and we have to make sure that these firewalls are getting updated daily with the latest threat signatures or being able to recognize the bad guys. Um, so that, that's a big change there. In addition, we move to uh, a web-based antivirus. So instead of just an endpoint that gets updated as you go, it's a web-based, so it's updated all the time. Um, it really helped for the endpoint protections. So this is the endpoint, the actual computer, laptop, server, etc. And we also add managed Windows patching updates to this. So this is super important, the managed Windows patching updates. All tech does this uh, for all of our customers in a stage method um, overnight. A lot of times when you hear of these major cybersecurity breaches, oftentimes it's as simple as a server not being patched. So this may not be the you know, most interesting cybersecurity layer, but it is sometimes one of the most important. So um, that was added to Gen 2. We move from take backup to what's called disk to disk backup. Um, and then this is the first time that we had to worry about email, really. So now we have to put a, an advanced spam filtering in place because this is the first time, let's think about this about seven to five years ago, the first time that email is becoming a major threat vector. So people are, are sending downloadable files that encrypt. They are spoofing emails, acting like someone they're not to trick employees, um, et cetera. So this is the first time that a spam filter, and most of our customers have this in place, um, was uh, put in place. So as you can see, good emails get through and the bad guys get blocked. So that is Gen 2 in a nutshell. Again, very simple um, because it was a simpler time. What we're about to move into is Gen 3 and Gen 4. Now stick with me here. Feel free to pause and rewind a little bit if you need to see some of these layers again. But this is going to provide a, a good overview of all the layers we recommend and why we recommend them. So let's move into Gen 3. Okay, so here we are in Gen 3. It has all of the things that um, we've seen in the other generations, except now, just at the firewall part. We're going to zoom in here. The firewall is much more than just daily updates. Now it's doing content filtering. So, hey, anyone on the network can't just search gambling sites or, or bad sites. It's filtering that content that employees or anyone on the network can see. This also helps not only from protection perspective, but product, productivity perspective. Geo IP filtering. This sounds scary. It's not. All it's saying is a lot of our customers don't need to do anything outside of the U.S. So we can block all of these countries. We don't need people from China even being able to access our network. So a geo IP filter blocks traffic from these countries. That alone is a huge free layer that comes with the firewall. Security services are always up to date, just like the last generation. They're highly configured based on our best practices that we've crafted with our team here. And deep packet inspection. All right, now we're also moving into Microsoft 365. So if you're watching this video, I can almost guarantee you are using Microsoft 365. It is so much more than just email nowadays, right? So just the spam filtering isn't gonna do everything we need it to do. So let's zoom in here and get a closer look. 
So Microsoft 365 is more than email as we've talked about. It's cloud storage. It's all the apps now also in the cloud. It's Microsoft Teams. It is email. So one of the most important things we have to put in place is the email threat protection, just like in previous generations. So this is blocking those bad emails from getting into your uh, inbox. But in addition, now with this generation, we have, we have implemented link protection. So even if a bad email comes into your inbox, link protection is analyzing those links. And if you click on it, it's going to test the link before it sends you there. Really important layer there. So this is just around email Microsoft 365. Moving on again, this layer cannot be understated. And in most cases, it's completely free. And that is multi-factor authentication. I'm sure you've heard of multi-factor authentication. Even if you don't know what it is, you use it all the time. When you log into your bank, they might send a code to your phone. When you need to get into that website you use all the time, there might be a code or a push notification. That's what multi-factor authentication is. With all of this data now also being in the cloud, your email, etc., the beauty of the cloud is you can access it from anywhere. The unfortunate thing about the cloud is you can access it from anywhere. So anyone that has your password, anyone anywhere in the world, um, if they have your password, boom, they can log in. So that's why you need multi-factor authentication in place because someone can literally have your password and this is going to protect you. And we do it as a push notification. So it's not even, you don't even have to tip, you don't even have to text a code anymore. Um, it actually sends a push notification just like a, an app. It's an app on your phone. It says, hey, is this you? All you have to do is click yes or no. So it makes it so much easier. In addition, we have Microsoft 365 backup. So if you have any data in OneDrive or SharePoint, you need to have Microsoft 365 backup. Just like an on-premise server, now you'd want to backup for that. If you have data in SharePoint and OneDrive, you'd want to backup for that. Microsoft says that you need a third-party backup because they're trying to rid themselves of liability, of course. <laughs> All right, moving on. So you have all of these wonderful things in place. Now we move into the backup. So if you have an on-premise server, we're no longer just doing disk to disk backup. What we wanna do is have the server replicated to an on-site what's called NAS or BDR, Network Attached Storage Device, or basically another server so it's ready to go if something happens to this one. And that again is gonna be replicated to our data center. Uh, that's what the safe is, it's a data center. So your data is in three points. It's on the server, it's on the other device on site, and then it's on a third device off site. And last but not least with generation three, you have all of these things in place, but sometimes the weakest link is gonna be your employees or sometimes yourself. So let's go in here. This is cybersecurity awareness training, a really inexpensive service that we recommend for all of our customers. It includes an annual baseline training. It's about an hour long, done in modules. People can log in and log off. Simulated phishing attempts. So that's where we are actually going to be sending them emails that are attempting to trick them. Um, and if they fail, they get additional training. And if they catch it and, and know that it's fake, they get additional points um, in a good way. So there's some positive reinforcement. There's weekly micro training. There is a risk source score. So if someone's clicking on a lot of phishing attempts and they're not doing their training, you're gonna get alerted and it's like, hey, get the training done. We gotta get you up to speed. And then dark web monitoring. So um, why this is so important is even if your cybersecurity at your office is perfect, a lot of your users may be using the same credentials for other sites, right? Like think about the Equifax hack or think about some of these other big hacks. If they're using their typical email and password, well now that information is out on the dark web and people can try and get into your network with that information. So dark web monitoring <clears throat> will say, hey, we found something that has your domain in it on the dark web, you need to change this password. So that is generation three in a nutshell. <clears throat> I hope you're sticking with me here because we're almost done maybe another minute, minute and a half. Now we're moving into generation four. This generation, very few customers are even on this generation. This is the generation we are making sure that we communicate to all customers. It is more expensive, 
there are things that we are recommending that you have an agreement in place for. Um, so let's get into that now. So we talked about the endpoint in every previous generation. You have the Windows firewall. Now we have advanced endpoint protection. So instead of just the web-based antivirus, this advanced endpoint protection is the next generation of endpoint protection. And what this does is you can see at the top, I won't spend too much time on this. I don't want to get too technical. Long story short, previous antivirus recognize signatures as good or bad and blocks them or allows them. With the new advanced endpoint protection, if it's an unknown file, so it's not labeled as good or bad, it will put it inside of a containment. It contains that file and it tries to get a verdict on it. Um, and if a verdict can't be found, it's actually it actually is sent to a 24-7 SOC security operations center where live people can go through the file, make sure it's safe before you get it. So this really is that next gen um, endpoint protection, and we're going to roll this out for all customers. Managed Microsoft updates and patching more important now than ever because bad guys, here's the reason why this is so important. Bad guys will learn of a vulnerability on Microsoft and they will start hitting machines, workstations, servers for that specific vulnerability because they know it's found in Microsoft machines. So if a server or a computer is not patched properly, they're going to get hit by that. So that's a common technique with these bad guys. Another endpoint protection is secure internet gateway. So this became so important to the pandemic because a lot of people were taking laptops or computers home or they were using home computers. So this layer, what this is, is it is an additional layer of content filtering on the actual computer or laptop. So even if that computer is outside of the network, it's not under the umbrella of the firewall any longer, they still aren't going to be able to search bad sites. Secure Internet Gateway is still going to be making sure that the sites that they're going to are safe. So that's a super important um, endpoint protection because before, if you brought that, that laptop out or a computer out, well, if it's not under the firewall anymore, it's not getting that content filtering. So they could search wherever and end up wherever and bring all those bugs home with them. So this is the next gen generation for, for the endpoint. And all of these layers in place would provide a very good barrier for cybersecurity. Okay, moving on. So we talked about Microsoft 365. There's only one additional thing here really that we're recommending in generation four, in addition to the email threat, in addition to the spam filtering, multi-factor authentication, and the backup. And that is something called conditional access. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritties with this. Um, again, it, it, it's, it's a, a premium subscription, so there's a monthly to it. But let's say you want you don't want anyone to be able to log into your Microsoft account outside of 30 miles from your office. So you can put parameters in place. You can say, hey, I don't want anyone logging in if they're not at this IP address, which is the IP address of my office. Or I don't want anyone logging in if they're in these specific countries. So just like GeoIP filtering, it is a condition around who can access your information. This is a really good way to block out so much of the bad guys. And that's new in this generation. And last, but most certainly not least, is a tool. This is the latest and greatest. We're recommending, again, for all of our customers. Um, we'll provide pricing on this as well. It's something called MDR, or Monitor, Detect, and Remedy. So let's, if you have all of this in place, these are wonderful, wonderful safeguards, and they are abs absolutely necessary, but are they sufficient? And from our perspective, no, because there's one key piece that is missing. Let's say, this is a perfect analogy that Tom uh, mentioned. Let's say these are all, uh, like you're at a base, and these are different, um, these are different, like a gate, right? So these are gates, and these are brick walls, and then you've got like barbed wire on top of it, whatever. So you have all of these layers in place, but if someone's trying to get into your network, well, they have all the time in the world to try and get through each of these layers because there's no security guards, right? There's no one monitoring 24 seven to see if someone's trying to break in. So you can have all the layers in the world, and yes, that may forever keep you protected, but 
it's good to have this missing piece, which is the actual 24-7 monitoring, trying to detect, and immediately remedi re remediating the situation. So that's the MDR piece, right? So this guy or, you know, this software is, is constantly looking. And if anything's detected, it goes, again, to a 24-7 security operations center to say, hey, this looks fishy. Let's stop this attack in its tracks. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, but there's a lot that we recommend, and we don't want to just push things on customers. We want to really show them what and why. We've spent, a, honestly, hundreds of hours over this last year identifying what layers need to be in place, how do we make it small business friendly, and what vendors do we use. So it's been this has been hundreds of hours put into about a 15 minute presentation that we have a very high confidence in telling customers this is going to keep you very safe there is no silver bullet so there's still a chance that something may go wrong and that's why we have to have those important backups in place um, and you know cybersecurity insurance and some of those other things so highly recommend all these layers we're going to be reaching out to all customers to explain this in more detail uh, and also provide a, a proposal on what that's going to look like to implement all of them. If you have any questions, we are always available, and I look forward to talking with you. Thanks.